Hi everybody, it's sweet to hear at Emanate. So it's May and it's also Mental Health Awareness Month. So we're gonna do some topics to increase the level of awareness that you have around your social and emotional development, your inner development. So today's topic is the family system and emotions. So the health of a marriage is actually the primary component to determine the health of a family. Caregivers, uh, parents, they are actually the folks that teach us early on how to have boundaries, how to have intimate relationships, how to function as a human being, how to treat people. However, if two people come together on the basis of needing something from that person that they don't have to complete them, the marriage in itself or the partnership in itself is not based on solid ground. So it's kind of like driving a car with a flat tire, right? You're, you're still able to move, but it is not pleasant, right? Your wheel is tight, there's a lot of noise, you're grinding, you're not getting as far as that you could possibly can. So if that partnership is running that way, it tends to bring stress to the other members of the family or the family system. And so people start to adapt to help support the functioning of that system. So again, using the analogy of the car moving with the flat tire, right? Somebody in the car might put the music louder so nobody hears the tire moving that way. Another person in the car might make sure that everybody else is comfortable. Do you have a blanket? Do you want some more snacks? Somebody else in the car might only be thinking about themselves and eating or drinking whatever they want to not focus on the stress. So ultimately you're learning skills to adapt to the dysfunction. So we talked a little bit about how our parents or caretakers uh, need to function. Let's talk a little bit about what happens when we are passengers in that vehicle that has a flat tire. In addition to our physical needs, we're actually born with five core emotional needs. The first one being connection, attunement, autonomy, love, and trust. So typically our environment really just needs to be good enough and those needs will get met. However, if the family system does not lend itself to do that, you learn to accommodate with adaptive skills in order to get connection, attunement, autonomy, love, and trust. So for example, if you hear that flat tire going and you mention it, and the whole family system says, there's no flat tire, what are you talking about? What sound? You realize then, oh, the way to connect with my family might be just to pretend like that's not happening. So it's like putting the music louder, right? Like, oh, that's not happening. So you adapt to how you're wired in order to meet the family system and have this idea of false connection. So the system is really fixed and rigid and the patterns are really the same. People play out their roles. You hear slogans or rules in those types of systems of, right, crying is for wimps. You're too emotional. And there are actually rules around what emotions are acceptable and what are not. So in that system, there might be a rule that says sadness is not acceptable here. Anger is not acceptable here. Only positive emotions are accepted here. So ultimately, what you use to adapt to the system when you're younger becomes maladaptive when you're older. Because if you can't handle when someone is sad, it might actually get in your way when you're older. If someone that perhaps you're in a relationship with becomes sad, you might look at them and say, you're just too emotional. Because that's what kept you safe in your system when you were younger. But that is what actually keeps you disconnected as you move through life. So let me show you a quick example of what happens when you have rules around how someone should connect or someone shouldn't. Come on, it's still early. Let's do something. Well, I have been toying around with an idea for 4D chess. How about we just talk? All right. In 4D chess. No. Come on, let's talk about our lives. Tell me something about you I don't know. I own nine pairs of pants. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, that, that's a good start. But I was thinking maybe something a little more personal. I see. Hmm. I own nine pairs of underpants. <laughs> how about I go first? But I don't want to know how many underpants you own. <laughs> Although based on the floor of your bedroom, I'd say it's a thousand. Okay, look. Here's something people do not know about me. When I first moved out to L.A., I did a topless scene in a low-budget horror movie about a killer gorilla. Oh, after I did it, I felt so ashamed. Thankfully, that thing never came out. Oh, I've seen that. <laughs> yeah, with serial atheist. <laughs> Howard found it online the day we met. Oh, you. Maybe it was literally the moment you walked out the door. I see the type of personal revelations you're going for. Okay, here's one I thought I'd take to the grave. Okay. Hmm. A while back, YouTube changed its user interface from a star-based rating system to a thumbs-up rating system. I tell people I'm okay with it, but I'm really not. <laughs> That's your big revelation? Yes. Whew, I feel 10 pounds lighter. Okay, you know what? I give up. I'm going to bed. Hey, here's something else you don't know about me. You just hurt my feelings. What did I do? I opened up and shared something deeply upsetting to me, and you treated it as if it were nothing. I, I didn't think it was a big deal. It is to me. That's the point. Sheldon, you are right. I'm really sorry. I should have known better. Your apology is accepted. Thank you. How about a hug? How about a hearty handshake? Come on. <laughs> now I know how you felt getting mauled by that sex-crazed gorilla. As you can see in that clip, Penny really felt like Sheldon should connect in a certain way. Right, the other way wasn't acceptable. When in reality, he was actually sharing something that was very important to him. So the importance of being aware of this information is to really understand your feeling around certain emotions so it doesn't disconnect you from relationships. And it lends itself to a healthy well-being because in things that are functional, so in our case, a car that is running on all four wheels with air, roles are chosen and they're flexible. All people, all members of the unit can share their ideas, their perceptions, their desires, their feelings, and not feel like their worth is compromised for it. So I really hope that you take some time to really think about how you perceive sadness or anger or positive emotion. And think about whether your feelings around those things connect you or actually separate you from people. I hope that helps. Until next time, emanate your best self.